and put this in there. Thanks. All right, guys. Hi, my name is Hamza. Um, just kind of just put it in my pocket. There we go. Uh, so, EcoBloom. I'm the founder and CEO of EcoBloom, and we're in a like ag tech, food tech based uh, startup uh, or Stockholm based startup. And my presentation, I'll talk a little bit about my. Um, oops, this is the. There we go. Wrong slide. Have you seen the whole presentation already? <laughs> So my story, I'm going to talk about my story, um, uh, kind of who I am and, and how everything started, and the typical startup story. So Hams is my name, and uh, my story started when I was a young child, like many of you were not too long ago, um, and I was like asked the same question over and over again, like, what do you want to do when you get older? And my answer was, was you know, the same every time, as vague then, uh, or as vague today as it was back in the days. I want to change the world. I want to be, you know, help people and improve the world for the better. That was my my dream and vision. But things for me started to really take off when I started um, at university. At university. So in 2012, I started my engineering program here at KTH, and I, uh, um, yeah, you know, I want to try to engage in the startup community as much as possible. I wanted to become an entrepreneur, and uh, and I applied to scholarships and, and programs and accelerators, and I was denied and declined and rejected all the time but you know my dream lived on I wanted to to do something and help improve the world and the people in it so but I got tired after three years I took my degree but I took a break after three years and I just took my gamble staff and I traveled the world so I bought a one-way ticket to Mexico and that's kind of when a new chapter in my life started so I met you know amazing people. I saw unforgettable places, and I really developed as a as a person. It's so cliche to come back and say I've developed so much after this trip, but it's really true. You do you do develop in a way, and but most importantly, during my trip, I found my passion, um, if you may. I, I found the thing that I wanted to continue doing, um, and, uh, and and that was um, you know to help empower people to eat better, live healthier, and grow smarter. Really think about it, like empower people to eat better, live healthier, and grow smarter. And it's, you know, I love the presentation prior to this. It's really important to, to, to communicate this and to really educate people about how you can achieve those things. And why is the question, well, are we doomed? Maybe, maybe not, if, unless we do something about it. Because this is what we're doing with, with the world right now. We're literally destroying our planet. We're ripping the soil um, uh, and the surface. And, uh, and you know we're cutting down trees and really destroying the planet the way we farm today because agriculture is actually the most um, contributing factor to climate change and greenhouse gases. You know, we're enjoying the nice hot weather, but it's actually it's not it's not good. It's not a positive sign. It's it's much it's very unusual to be this warm at this time. So I think we are aware of this, but I mean how how can we? How can we educate people about you know how their consumption in this case affects the world in a negative way? So, um, and of course this is becoming increasingly crucial, more so with a growing population. You know we're expected to be and reach almost 10 billion people by 2050. Um, and that's a huge number, and and just kind of break it down for you. That requires us to produce more food in the coming four decades than we have in the past 8,000 years. We need to produce more food, and we need to produce more food locally, because more of us, more and more people are moving into cities. We're moving into urban environments. Urbanization, that's the concept. So how can we produce more food, but also move more food locally and in a sustainable way? And Andrea was talking about you know, how they grew in California, and we can actually grow all year round. And someone mentioned hydroponics farming, and there are so many farming methods. None of them are new. They are very old, ancient growing techniques, but we, you know, now we're starting to look into it and like, okay, this is actually very sustainable and we're starting to grow, grow vertically, you know, vertical farming is a big concept, probably you've heard of it. Um, so after, or after my trip, um, I traveled for or over a year and I moved to Holland and I started growing my own food. Um, that was kind of the thing I wanted to grow and I wanted to grow aquaponically. So combining hydroponics with aquaculture, which is quite a unique um, uh, uh, unique concept. Um, so I was growing my own food in Holland, 
um, uh, legal herbs, um, as, as many of my slides are. What did he grow, actually? Basil, microgreens, veggies, those things. So what is aquaponics? Um, aquaponics is an ancient method, growing technique that dates back thousands of years to the Mayan Indians and to the Aztecs. And what it is, is it combines two different techniques. It combines hydroponic growing, which is cultivation of plants in water, and they're raising fish in tanks. And it's extremely sustainable. And what happens is that you're utilizing the fish waste as the nutrient source. So the fish waste is naturally broken down by microorganisms in the water. And then they are, you know, depending on how the system looks like, you are pumping the water from one tank to another, from the fish waste to the plants. And the plants absorb the nutrients and they, at the same time, filter the water, which recirculates back to the fish. So it's a close, sustainable ecosystem, and it's not up to 95% more water efficient than any, any other growing technique. No, today, you don't use any soil because the plants are grown in water. You don't have any pesticides or herbicides, and it's completely you know, organic. Um, there's a big debate about that, what's organic, what's not organic. You grow up to three, actually, three times as fast than conventional farming. Um, and of course, it's self-sustaining in a way, it depends on how your system looks like. Um, so, and this is a technique you can grow um, all year round um, because you grow this in a controlled environment. In a, you, you see this on rooftops, underground, in the house. So, and obviously you saw me growing it in my own dorm room in Holland. So yeah, this is a, a, a sustainable technique um, where we can produce more food and faster. So and we see that more, more uh, today. So there I was growing my own uh, you know, fresh herbs, organic in my dorm room using fish. Yeah, and this is such a hard little prototype uh, using like plastic buckets and, and just gluing tubes and crazy. But this is how you prototype. This is how a prototype should look like. And I was growing in my room and people thought I was crazy, literally walking past my dorm and like, are you using fish? Like, what are you doing? And uh, so they were fascinated. And for me, that's really when I saw, okay, there's a potential. You know, this could be a fun, not just a way of growing your own food, all year round, but you can actually educate people um, by combining technology and, and nature in a seamless way. And I'll get to the technology part. Um, so I decided to, um, you know, create something. And that was kind of the, what resulted into the birth of EcoBloom, the startup, uh, and our kind of mission of empowering people and educate, educating people about sustainable farming and how they can grow smarter, live healthier, and more sustainably. Um, and the first product that we created was the Eco Garden. It's a much nicer version than my plastic bucket in the previous slide. But it's the same growing technique. What we've done is just to modernize this ancient growing technique um, and, and, and really scale it down to a nice consume, con, and consumer, pro, consumer product. And again, the fish waste is the nutrient source for the plants. They absorb the nutrients, which is recirculated back fresh and clean to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the fish. So it's a closed, sustainable ecosystem and you're growing all year round without watering your plants ever. But of course, we live in an era where technology is so important and we have wind seed everywhere. So how do we um, combine technology with it? So we have sensors integrated in it. We've actually developed our own computer chip, which we placed inside of it. Um, so you can control and monitor the whole process from your phone. You can literally feed your fish to the application. You can schedule it. So if you go on vacation, you can schedule the feeding sessions to feed it for you automatically depending on the input that you put in. So you literally choose your fish inside the app. It's crazy, I know, but it, it, it's true. <laughs> we have the temperature sensor inside that measures the temperature all the time. You have um, uh, the LED panel and a light sensor on top of it. So that measures the ambient light all the time, 24 seven, to um, control the light setting. So if, the, if it comes in a lot of natural light, it will literally dim down the intensity of it at the LED panel to optimize the plant growth, but also save you energy. So it's a very cool, sustainable ecosystem, but most importantly, it's an educational process and platform that we've built. So you as a user, you're not only growing your own food automatically in a you know, sustainable and interactive way, you're actually learning about sustainable farming. So you're becoming immersed in this growing process, literally from seed to harvest. And it becomes um, more fun and interactive, and, 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 and that will encourage people to, to kind of think in a specific way, because in the end, what we're trying to do is to kind of create that mindset um, and, and awareness, because we want to, we want people to understand how their consumption of food affects the world in a specific way. And if you expose children to this type of innovation and product, they are more likely to grow their own food when they get older. So, what else can you do? Obviously, we want to 
squeeze more tech in, and so we've said this at Voice Assistant as well, <laughs> yeah, which is quite a crazy. So, hey Google, talk to EcoGarden. That's how you Hello, start Hamza. the conversation. How can I, help you? Um, I would like to feed my fish. A bit slow. Your fish have been fed. What would you like to do next? <laughs> Nothing, thank you. So. It's a fun way of, of, of kind of talking with your ecosystem, um, and again, it's a educational. Okay, uh, see you later. Um, so you come home and you talk with your ecosystem, and obviously this same t technology can be integrated in different other products that we're you know going to launch in the future as well. And obviously, we did like a typical crowdfunding campaign. We we brought it to the market. We wanted to see how people, you know, how they reacted. Do they want this? And we did a crowdfunding campaign. And we did a successful crowd crowdfunding campaign last September, where we raised over a million sec in less than four weeks, and we have sold close to or over 400 micro farms, as we call them, to people in over 40 countries. And we get emails and pictures of all um, uh, from people very excited, and 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 of course. You know, the, the kids, that's kind of the main segment, young families, children, they love this type of, it's like a new Tamaguchi, you know, we've had, maybe some of you had it and you're playing with it and feeding it, <laughs> hopefully not killing your fish, but uh, but those are kind of the two biggest hurdles, like people are like, oh, but I have to clean my tank and I have to, I'll probably kill my fish, like we've all done once at least, but it's uh, self-sustaining, so it actually blocks you from feeding, overfeeding your fish and it cleans it for you automatically with integrated filters. So, uh, yeah, obviously we've gained a lot of traction as well since we launched, that was almost one year exactly, and we've been like official, incorporated. We've been part of different startups, uh, accelerators and incubators, and we were last week actually part of, um, or we were accepted to EIT's food accelerator in Spain, which is quite nice, four months in Spain. Um, and we've gone, gained a lot of media uh, coverage and, and exposure and, and Red Bull is one of our biggest partners as well. You might think Red Bull, what are they doing? <laughs> They're actually just like they're, you know, um, are in, you know, active in, in extreme sports and music, etc. They have their own branch called um, uh, Red Bull Basement and I encourage you to, to look it up. Um, uh, it's like an incubator um, and they've been part of us or helping us, expose us, posting articles on their official websites, redbull.com, etc., etc. And we've been around the world with them actually traveling. And Design Toilet is uh, our biggest partner. So we're actually in the production. Um, we're producing the unit and going to ship them out in stores and Design Toilet and Selfridges and Smart Tech and other stores around the world uh, very, very soon. Um, so uh, yeah, and we are uh, the nerds. This is our latest recruit. Uh, no, it's, it's the Prince of Sweden for those who don't know who he is. <laughs> but I love using this picture. At least in Sweden, abroad, they don't understand the joke. So it's myself and, uh, and Juan, who was my dorm um, roommate um, in Holland. And, and he was like fascinated, like, oh my god, what's this? And uh, so I pitched the idea of this kind of future microphone where everyone grows their own food at home and they learn and about sustainable farming. And he was sold. So he joined and he's still he's the CTO today and co founder. Uh, Christian is the uh, chief design officer and Emil the uh, strategist uh, of EcoBloom. We're a few more, but uh, at, during this day, we only the guys are at the office. Um, so yeah, and of course our journey of how you know the idea and and the dream of how to empower people to grow smarter lives on, and that's you know a constant journey for us to always educate people about sustainable farming. And, and, and you know, expose them to, to how they can grow their own food and, and how that could be fun and interactive and not necessarily, you know, you don't, because we want to buy fresh herbs at the local <coughs> supermarket and I'm sure many of you, how many have bought a basil plant struggling to keep it alive and just finding it dead after two days? That's the, the typical problem for all of us. So, so how can we kind of overcome those barriers and, and make it more accessible for the, for the people? And uh, yeah, thank you.